Assalamu alaikum. alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. Are you saying that what you said on that bus 11 years ago, that you did not actually kiss women without consent or grope women without consent? I have great respect for women. Nobody has more respect for women than I do. So for the uh, record, said, you're saying you never did that? I said things that, frankly, you, you hear these things, I said. And I was embarrassed by it, but I have tremendous respect for women. Have you ever done those things? women have respect for me. And I will tell you, no, I have not. And I will tell you that I'm going to make our country safe. Every woman lied when they came forward to hurt my campaign. Total fabrication. The events never happened. Never. Adult film star Stormy Daniels breaking her silence on 60 Minutes explaining why she's telling the world about the night she says she had sex with President Trump back in 2006. And you had sex with him? Yes. You were 27, he was 60. Were you physically attracted to him? No. Not at all? No. Did you want to have sex with him? No. But I didn't, I didn't say no. I'm not a victim, I'm not... It was yeah. entirely consensual? Oh, yes. Yes. And in a new allegation, Daniel says she was once physically threatened to keep quiet about the alleged affair. She says it happened in 2011, just after she had sold her story to In Touch Magazine's sister publication, which ended up not publishing the account. I was in a parking lot going to a fitness class with my infant daughter. I was taking, you know, the seats facing backwards in the back seat, diaper bag, you know, getting all the stuff out. And a guy walked up on me and said to me, leave Trump alone, forget the story. And then he leaned around and looked at my daughter and said, it's a beautiful little girl, it'd be a shame if something happened to her mom. And then he was gone. Daniel says that left her shaken. The experience, one of the reasons she agreed to sign a hush agreement with President Trump's attorney for $130,000 just days before the election. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss them. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the back. It was 50 years ago today, FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover made headlines by calling Dr. Martin Luther King, quote, the most notorious liar in the country. Hoover made the comment in front of a group of female journalists ahead of King's trip to Oslo, where he received the 1964 Nobel Peace Prize, becoming its youngest recipient. While J. Edgar Hoover was trying to publicly discredit King, the agency was also taking covert action. The FBI sent King an anonymous letter threatening to expose his extramarital affairs. The unsigned, type letter was written in the voice of a disillusioned civil rights activist, but it's believed to have been written by one of Hoover's deputies, William Sullivan. The existence of the so-called suicide letter has been known for years, but only last week did the public see the unredacted version. Our next guest found the full letter while researching Hoover's personal files. Beverly Gage is a professor of American history at Yale University. She's working on a book about J. Edgar Hoover called G-Man. Well, as you mentioned, I'm writing a biography of J. Edgar Hoover, and this summer I was in Washington doing some research at the National Archives. And at the National Archives, they now have a pretty full edition uh, or copies of uh, Hoover's official confidential files, which were sort of the secret files that he kept in his own office. And most of them are about major public figures. And these have been turned over from the FBI to the National Archives, so you have them sitting there now. And I was going through them, really, as part of my research for Hoover, not expecting that this letter would be there. I, of course, knew about the letter. It's one of these really famous documents from both the civil rights movement and the history of the FBI. And so my jaw sort of dropped when I saw this unredacted version just sitting there in the National Archives. So tell us what, exactly what it said. 
It's a very threatening letter. Um, it has sort of two pieces to it. One are these kind of vague threats that you mentioned. King, okay. you've got to do something. You've got to take action. You're a fraud. Take yourself out of public life. And then most of it is actually about his sex life and is about these kind of over-the-top, really racially charged, very graphic accusations about extramarital affairs, about orgies, and the implication is that all of this is on the tapes that accompanied the letter and that whoever is sending this letter has more information where all of that comes from and they're threatening to expose it. And can you talk about the context here, why the FBI, uh, Hoover especially, was targeting King and what surveillance tactics they employed in going after him? This letter is probably the most notorious symbol of a much wider campaign against King and against the civil rights movement, against the left in general in the 1960s. Um, but for King in particular, the FBI had started wiretapping several of his associates well before this letter, um, mostly people who were suspected of having uh, ties to the Communist Party in the 1950s. Um, and so that really was the beginning of their kind of getting closer and closer to King himself. Um, by 1963, right after the March on Washington, the Bureau had grown very alarmed about King's growing influence, and they began to bug his hotel rooms while he was on the road, and they began to wiretap his home and his office. Um, so by the time Hoover held this press conference today, 50 years ago, they had been wiretapping King. They had enormous amounts of information um, about King, about his personal life, about his political activities. And and they had been watching many people in his circle as well. Family, our official position on this channel has always been that Muslims should be politically independent and never lean either left or right in a democratic system. Both sides of the spectrum are pillars of white supremacy and only the ignorant would give away their votes for free, expecting their enemies to do right by them. Daniel Hikikuchu, however, has always taken a very clear right-leaning political position. So much so that in 2016, he openly wrote an entire article about Donald Trump, and you can see Donald Trump here calling the Yadan, will be surprisingly good for Muslims. It's well known that Daniel Hikikuchu not only supports Donald Trump, but is an avid apologist for him. And he's directly responsible for thousands of Muslims expressing their undying love for their cheap toupee wearing tiny handed zaddy. The FBI is an infamous and high level anti-black organization. J. Edgar Hoover, who is one of the most notorious hostile white supremacists and homosexuals in modern times, used the might and the resources of the FBI backed by the US government to dismantle every black and civil rights organization. From Marcus Garvey to the Black Panthers, and directly in control of the assassinations of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. It is safe to say that if it wasn't for the struggles of Martin Luther King, it's very unlikely that any Muslim foreigner would be given an opportunity to even be in America. Even though I don't support, nor am I a fan of peaceful protest as a strategy, I would have to admit Martin Luther King's civil rights movement and the televised brutality of police hosing, beating, and sicking dogs on unarmed black people forced the U.S. government's hand at that time. So a government who had no history of taking darker-skinned immigrants suddenly started to accept them in order not to be stigmatized by the world as a sick, racist nation, but rather a progressive one upholding human rights and equality. So you're probably wondering, what do Donald Trump Martin Luther King and the FBI have to do with Daniel Hikikuchu. Donald Trump, Daniel's Lord and Zaddy, has been credibly accused of rape, has publicly and shamelessly bragged about his sexual ex exploits, has paid porn stars hush money to keep his explicit relations with them quiet, but scour the internet and you will not find a single article from Daniel Hikikuchu speaking about any of that stuff. But the FBI, whose bloody operations caused the death of many innocent black people, including Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, the FBI who surveilled 
Martin Luther King for many years and set up elaborate spy operations only to find dirt on him in order to dismantle the civil rights movement, not help it, to dismantle it, and even tried to goad Martin Luther King to commit suicide with their findings, Daniel Hikikuchu managed to do something that not even J. Edgar Hoover nor the FBI at that time did. So on Daniel Hikikuchu's official telegram, he shares this article, biographer behind report alleging sexual misconduct by Martin Luther King Jr. says other publications rejected his story because they lacked courage. It has nothing to do with no lacking no courage. Even the FBI and J. Edgar Hoover were smart enough and intelligent enough not to share what these people who are claiming to have courage shared. Why? Because they understood and knew how they got that information and how it would be perceived by the rest of the world as a blatant overstep in justice and nefarious act which is clearly motivated by racism. So, the FBI being as intelligent as they are, didn't, po didn't release it. But this guy's talking about bravery. Well, wait, there's more. What did Daniel Hikikuchu write about it? This is his own words, by the way, about the article about Martin Luther King. No Muslims were asking about Martin Luther King. No Muslims asked him for this information, mind you, nor did black people ask him for this information. He volunteered this and he commented on it. And what were his comments? No hashtag me too reckoning if liberals love you. Mind you, which government ordered the surveillance of Martin Luther King? Was it the conservatives? No. Was it the Republicans? No. It was the same liberal government that he complains about every single day that ordered the surveillance of Martin Luther King. So it's hard to hear. So just to uh, repeat some of the key words, uh, Kennedy says, the trouble with King is everybody thinks he's our boy. King is so hot these days, it's like Marx coming to the White House. When we talk about FBI surveillance of Dr. King, J. Edgar Hoover is sort of the face of it, and that's justifiable. But he had authorization. He had authorization from President Kennedy and uh, President Kennedy's brother, Robert F. Kennedy, the attorney general, who signed the wiretap order. Yes, JFK, the leader of the Democratic Party, a liberal, was the one who gave the go ahead for the FBI to surveil Martin Luther King. Black people, you have no friends. Furthermore, Daniel not only does he make this embellishment of history and the reality, but he makes a deliberate swipe at Muslim imams and black people all in one fell swoop, talking about simp imams celebrate MLK unironically, meaning that since Martin Luther King had some unsavory information revealed about him by the enemy FBI, if you're an imam involved in Martin Luther King Day, you're a simp. Meanwhile, Donald Trump is completely free and clear of any of his charges. Why? Because, of course, Daniel is so concerned about black people, right? Daniel didn't say simpy mams celebrate birthdays. Daniel didn't say simpy mams celebrate Labor Day, celebrate July 4th, celebrate Christmas, celebrate Thanksgiving. He connected simpy mams with Martin Luther King. Why do you think that is? Stupid! So what we are seeing here is Daniel signing off on the gathering and spreading of information from groups that are historically hostile against black people, let alone Muslims, and further uses the most outlandish lies while buffering himself against black people by saying simp liberal imams, thereby defecating on the legacy of a man who was not only thrown in jail, beaten, 
violently assaulted, surveilled, discredited, but also eventually assassinated by a racist white government. And the only thing that he can remember is Martin Luther King's private sexual history, a private life that wasn't made public at the time of Martin Luther King, but he took it upon himself to publicize it to Muslims, even though no Muslims asked, nor were they bothered by it. But of course, he did this for what? For great concern of black people, right? And that's why he said about Donald Trump's credibly alleged and widely publicized sexual escapades, nothing. Paper gold. You see, black folks are chumps. If America were to tell you to bring all the rocks in this country to her, and she'll give you a million dollars for it. You'll do it. And the next day she'll tell you we're using rocks for currencies, chump. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the...